I knew my faith and my personal beliefs weren't exactly the norm in UCD, but throughout my campaign, I was very open about who I was. I got asked over and over again my views on, uh, on abortion and how I was going to deal with that. And I answered everything very upfront, very honest. I said I was going to respect the pro-choice mandate of the union. I was going to delegate on issues like marching at pro-choice rallies and I was just explaining how I was going to make it work and it really was a solid plan. It was going so, so well. It was only, and I'm sure we'll get to this in a moment, when an issue, um, an illegal issue came up with some abortion information that things started to unfortunately fall apart. And it's admirable that you, you didn't want to be disingenuous when you were going for the role and you were upfront about your beliefs. And one of those beliefs, of course, you're a very strong advocate for pro-life and for the campaign. Where does that come from, first of all? Again, I've been pro-life for as long as I can remember. Our family has gone to pro-life rallies in the summer and I've attended loads of different events. But there is one experience in particular where my pro-life views really became very real for me. When I was about 15, my mother had a miscarriage and I got to meet my 13-week-old baby brother, Lawrence. And I'll never forget getting to hold him in my hand and look into his face. He had such a human face, eyes, ears, nose, mouth and just admiring his features. He had amazing hands that had fingernails and even creases on his knuckles. It was just so amazing to meet someone so small, but so perfectly human at just 13 weeks. And it just really opened my eyes to how passionate I was about protecting life and loving life from the beginning. Um, so from that moment onwards, I was, I guess, even more, um, Passionate, passionate about, about my pro-life views. Now the students union, the students voted for it to have a pro-choice mandate. So some people would probably wonder why did you even want to go into that environment if you have such strongly held beliefs that are pro-life? Mm. Sure, it's a good question. I mean, I ran for president of my students union, which I think anyone is entitled to do. It is a students union for over 30,000 individuals. Of course, there's going to be a range of different opinions on, a lo on loads of issues across those over 30,000 people. It was honestly going so, so well. There was so much progress being made. Our working environment was very positive. We were working together so well. And it really was set up and we had such great potential for the rest of the year. The magazine that the Students Union runs and has run for the last maybe one or two years, uh, winging it, when did it come to your attention that there was information in there that was information about where you could go for an abortion or numbers you could contact? When did you find out about that? Sure, so the union had this book, a college guide handbook is essentially what it was for incoming students. And I saw the content of the book before it went to print and I knew it contained information on abortion services. So I delegated the sign off of the content to another officer, to our campaigns communications officer. So somebody else signed off on the book and it all went to print. Then these books arrive in the offices about a week later and I was having coffee with a staff member who pointed out, we were discussing several things, but they also pointed out some of the abortion information might be illegal. So that raised alarm bells and we sought legal advice from the union's lawyer and that person confirmed we were risking personal criminal convictions and up to 4,000 euro in fines each for myself and anyone else involved with the book because we were at risk of breaching um, an act from 1995 to do with regulation of abortion information. So once I had that advice, it was quite clear what I needed to do. I was not comfortable with risking a personal criminal record for the rest of my life and for anybody else involved with the books. I promised to respect a pro-choice mandate of the union, and, and I did, but I never promised to break the law or to risk a criminal record for the rest of my life. So that's when I had to intervene with the book and we had to amend the page. All that had to be amended was the abortion information that was potentially illegal was removed and it was replaced with phone numbers and websites for different organizations. And um, that did, I mean, some people didn't agree with my decision and I can respect that. But I would also say, is it really fair to impeach somebody for not wanting to break the law and for doing everything, I believe I did everything I could um, to correct the situation. But I suppose people would say, how realistic is it that any action would ever be taken against you or a fine mm -hmm. or a jail or a sentence or anything like that? Sure, that did come up several times because the union did produce similar information last year and other students' unions, including our own, I'm sure in the past have done similar things. But at the same time- You thought not on my watch? 
you know, I respect that different people have different points of view. I, I get that. But I don't think it's fair to pressurize someone. I mean, there was pressure put on me for about a week, um, hours and hours of conversations about why I should let this publication go ahead. And I don't think it's fair to put that pressure on someone to break the law against their will. It's, it's you know, I just, I wouldn't do that to somebody else. And it just, it was difficult, a very difficult situation. So you went against the wishes of the majority of students in the college and all of the officers working in the students' union, and you made an executive decision to republish or reprint the magazine. How did it go down? So I made the decision exactly to amend the book. And it was met with some backlash by some students and they started a petition for my impeachment over this issue saying that their president had censored abortion information and there were quotes in the paper saying that I had broken a promise to delegate the pro-choice issue and these were these were the arguments that were being used against me and for my impeachment but of course my re response and I wish that it could have gotten out there a little bit more was that I could not delegate a personal criminal conviction. I could not show up to court and say, as CEO of the company, I handed this off to somebody else. It wasn't my fault. That would not work. It was not a personal moral issue. It was a legal issue. That Can you really understand how a lot of students would find that hard to believe and see, mm -hmm. you know, uh, because you have such strong beliefs? that they would say, well, look, this isn't really a legal, it's dressed up as a legal issue and an editorial one, but it really is her core beliefs. I would hope that if someone would look at the chronology of events that, and how they happened, that they would see that it really was a legal issue. I mean, originally, I delegated the sign-off of the content to somebody else. I did not try and intervene in the first instance. If it had been a personal moral issue, I would wonder why the books would have been printed in the first place, you know? And Were you surprised at the reaction? I wasn't overly surprised that some people were upset with my decision. I went beyond uh, people being upset though. Mm. I, mean, I mean, I remember reading tweets and looking through messages on Facebook and um, there just seemed to be a huge amount of anger and uh, a lot of hatred as well. Mm, there was. Uh, a lot of nastiness on both sides, yes, but I think if you look through the, the timelines on Twitter, you'll see that the majority of it was directed at you. Did sure. that surprise you? Yeah, I guess if we go back to the day of my election, so I was elected on March 9th, 2017, and a few minutes after my election was announced, some people were already calling for my impeachment on Twitter and Facebook. So I wasn't overly surprised that some people were looking to impeach me. I mean, it did kind of feel like some people were waiting for that from the get-go and that there was a target on my back from the beginning and no matter what I had done or I don't know, it was, it was hard to see how I could have avoided um, some sort of, of targeting. But when this happened, it did go quite far. There was some really awful stuff said online, some very violent uh, language, and some even some threats of physical abuse on campus towards myself. So you strike me as a very strong and confident and well-able person, but even for the most uh, well-able to read some of the tweets that I did, you know, tweet after tweet after mm -hmm. tweet calling you a bitch, mm -hmm. uh, calling you everything else under the sun. I saw one tweet saying Katie has to die. Mm. Um, mm. How do you cope with that? I mean, what made you get through that? Support. Support from family and friends is probably the one thing that really got me through. Along with, there were so many people praying for me. There were people doing novenas, there were people doing family prayer and offering up for me, having masses and everything. So. The support from family and friends and the prayers are honestly the only thing that it could have got me through because there was a lot of hate and it had to be, it was so balanced out with the support and I did my best to focus on the support and sometimes I wasn't even able to read what was online because it was upsetting. A lot of people went to Twitter as well and were saying that it was a witch hunt mm -hmm. and trial by Twitter but then there's a lot of people who were saying look it was democracy because it did go to a vote mm -hmm. of course uh, and you were impeached. What was that moment like when you, you stood there and you realised that the majority of the students, and I think it was one of the biggest votes in the history of UCD, uh, what was that like? It was an odd experience. It was like my last seven months being president and president-elect just kind of flashed before my eyes and I couldn't believe we were here, that it had come to this. I mean, I knew from the beginning there were some people that wanted me out, but I didn't see it getting to this stage so fast as well. Um, I found it disappointing throughout the whole process, just how much misinformation was out there. There were so many people saying 
um, some crazy things, some things that were just kind of twists of the truth and a lot of it really got out there. There was loads of articles against me and um, just a lot of shared Facebook posts that really I didn't feel represent um, the true version of events. So it was, it was difficult to see um, such confusion and chaos and I think there was quite a, a bandwagon approach to voting as well. A lot of people um, that I was meeting that were on their way to the polls were saying, oh, I'm so glad I bumped into you. I was actually just about to go with the crowd and vote yes, but they would listen to the um, points I had to make and then they would think about it again. And some people ended up voting no because of that. Uh, so it was a little bit disappointing, I guess, to see the confusion and the chaos. You said uh, at the podium there, I watched the speech on YouTube, that it was a sad day for freedom of speech in UCD. What did you mean by that? It really does show that there's some people who just are not tolerant of a different point of view to want to kick somebody out since day one because of their personal view on abortion, which is such a personal and sensitive issue and everybody should be entitled to their own opinion. Does it worry you, Katie, that other young people across the country who may have the same beliefs as you do would be less likely now to speak up and speak mm. them out loud when they see what happened to you and the backlash on social media? I would hope the opposite would happen. I would hope that the light this is shown on some people's intolerance will encourage more people and show people the need really to stand up and have your voice heard because if some people don't want your voice to be heard I almost think that can be more of an incentive to get your voice out there. It will take courage, it will take a bit of bravery but I think it really is just so necessary. I mean there's no point in just having one side of the story heard on this really important issue and of course for our country it's such an important time for both sides to be heard. It's so critical to debate and to intellectual freedom that we can all speak up and have our voices heard. I've met so many students, pro-life students and undecided students over the last few weeks who have said they're afraid to speak up. They just don't have the courage to stand up against the backlash that they're inevitably, inevitably going to they be receiving. They think they're going to receive. Yeah, it's not just this instance. I've been at abortion debates in college. I've been at loads of different events where you just get shouted down and people boo at you and people talk to you nasty afterwards and write awful things on, on social media. Like that's just so not... So you think there needs to be more tolerance? There definitely more tolerance, more debate. respect, absolutely. If you were to go back again, would you do anything differently? I think it's hard to see what I could have done differently. I mean, having got the legal advice, having followed all the regulations and you know, the path that I, I felt I had to take, I feel like I fought the good fight. I did what I felt was right, what I felt I needed to do. And um, I, don't see, I don't see how much else could have been different. Finally, if I just had to ask you, is there one thing you have learned from this? Good, bad or indifferent? Mm. I think the main thing that I've learned from all this is that freedom of speech is so important. And I really do feel like it's under attack on our campuses and in, in our country at the minute. So from the moment I opened my mouth and said I was pro-life um, when I was running for president, from that very moment, it was like I had a target on the back, on my back, and people were looking for an opportunity to to take me down. And while I respect that people have different opinions to me on the issue of abortion and other things, I think it's so important that we are respectful of each other, that we give opportunity for each side to speak, and that we don't belittle or um, or attack, I guess, people with different points of view. Katie Esco, thank you so much. Thank you.